Hello friend, our green journey now is on the way to Algail Industrial Park, Ras Al Khaima, Dubai, United Arab Emirates. We are going to conduct the UGBC lead preliminary assessment for Myco Golf LLC and Air Handling Unit Manufacturing Facility. Myco Golf LLC is a sister concern company of Myco Italia, SPA, and part of the Myco Holding from Germany and Hira Holding from UAE. I make this presentation to explain the existing building preliminary assessment process. As we are approaching the factory, I would like to explain the UGVC lead preliminary assessment details as we do it in 360 TSL. You may enjoy the journey, sightseeing, see the Dubai city and landscape, and know the factual information about the assessment. If you have any question or need more information, just let us know. And information is always free with us. Use GBC lead preliminary assessment is a walkthrough and visual inspection of existing building projects. And we at 360 TSL do it for free of cost. After the walkthrough and visual inspection and collection of project information, we will prepare a comprehensive report with the following information. The first, it will have a summary of findings. And it will explain whether project is qualifying for your GBC lead certification under EBO plus M version 4 2014 rating system, meet lead minimum project requirements NPR. And if yes, then what rating system is the best for the projects that include single building, group projects or lead or, or lead campus approach. What level of certification project can earn with very minimal cost? What level of regulated energy project may save and harm? What level of domestic water project may save and harm? What other water savings measures are available or doable at the site? How can project management can improve the site appearance and maintain the site in a professional manner? How project can ensure project indoor environment and comfort for all occupants that will contribute to the higher productivity? Lead certified project benefit will be explained. Value of lead logo will be explained. At the same time, we will explain all the critical issues and mandatory that need to be lead compliant in the project site will be explained with cost simplifications. At the same time, we will examine all the good doings by the project management that may contribute to the lead requirements and lead points. We will list that accordingly so project management can understand easily. In this process, we'll use several equipments and testing devices to determine projects in the conditions and that includes lux meter to determine the required lux level is available in all spaces, whether it is over or under, CO2 monitor to see concentration of CO2 level in all flows and all Spaces. We'll use air quality index meter to evaluate the indoor air quality as a whole. We'll use sound level meter to check sound to see whether or not it is in an acceptable level. Sometimes we use an meter for checking the CFM of exhaust fan, whether the exhaust fan is performing as it's supposed to be. We'll use digital thermometer to check heat gain, heat loss of the surfaces and pipes, etc. This report will contain a section with UGVC lead primary assessment summary of observation, measures, recommendations, savings and benefits. In this section, project team will find many items that can be mitigated with very little effort and with minimal or no cost. We'll have a section in the report a pictorial presentation of all findings with a simple recommendation or comments for easy understanding. 
this will be under lead credits criteria, major items and with summary mitigation recommendation. We'll have a section with information regarding lead existing building rating system information with all prerequisite list and total points table. We'll have section with lead EBOM D4 scorecard with cost simplification cover. So people conveniently can check their certification level or possibility. We'll provide lead certification level assumption. We'll have a section with all the cost unit by unit with for all credit so project team can calculate that uh, to find out how much will be the total possible cost for the green building certification based on the point they uh, want to achieve. We will have a section with green building step by step process and certification timeline. We will have certification options, the benefit and then we'll have a template to calculate our consultancy cost. We'll have a template to calculate UGBC cost. We'll have information regarding other cost and payment plan. And we're also going to have our service level that include in our consultancy fee in details. As you know, this existing uh, building project will require ASHRAE level 1 and level 2 energy audit, detailed feasibility study which will, will be part of our consultancy field and all the report that uh, we will uh, submit <coughs> and all our scope work will be written on that section. At the end, you will find a best relevant certificate uh, that will be applicable to all of our project that if you find uh, with our scope of work Anybody offering a lower price will meet that price. Or if you want us to uh, work with other people's scope of work, we're going to work on their uh, price. So you have nothing to lose. Just talk to us and we'll do the need for. Now I'm gonna take you to the project and show you a few things that we check. Of course, we're not gonna show you uh, things that confidential. I'm not going to share you with that. Maybe I'll talk about it. And I'm not going to share it uh, in the project inside. But we'll talk about it. And we may use a few of the pictures from other projects without uh, disclosing the project name for you to understand. So let's go to some. Thank you. As you see here, uh, they have a huge amount of daylight. And they are using the daylight very efficiently and they make their work uh, from the daylight. Of course, there's some light is on. We can use a daylight sensor to mitigate that, even get further savings on the lighting energy requirements. And that can be done uh, with our uh, ASHRAE Level 1 energy assessment walkthrough to figure out which sensor can be applicable at which area. Here you can see the outside, which is very good, I can say because these are the gray tiles that reduce the heat energy uh, compared to RCC, uh, RCC floor or RCC road. Uh, this gray tiles is very good. It also has some uh, penetration possibility for the rainwater to go down. The site is very clean, which is comply with site maintenance policy that you're going to have, uh, apply for this project. Because as you know, lead requirements is to adopt a site maintenance policy which they are going to be uh, complying with and easily complying with because they are already doing it. Uh, in the site you can see that everything is very organized, very clean. Here you can see the parking which is also part of the heater in effect reduction measures. You can see that white canopy uh, top of the car uh, that's reduced the heat gain and also keep the car uh, in a cool manner. Uh, this is the lead point uh, parking on the shed. Here we have to do this section is called water uh, efficiency. In water efficiency, we have to reduce the water use uh, by 20% from EPEC uh, 2005 standard. For that manner, we need low flow water features, and this project already have low flow water features, uh, so they don't have to expend any other money 
to get it done. They already are very conscious about the water use and they are using the low flow water features. We just have to see that if, if we can harvest the grey water or sewage treatment plant can incorporate into this project. Here you can see the landscaping which is rare in Dubai but they are doing it, they are keeping some green at the site and we have to find out whether or not we can use the grey water for landscaping purposes. At the same time they are employing the drip irrigation which is also reduce their uh, water use uh, outside. This is a very important uh, feature for the LEED project to reduce all the water use as much as possible. <clears throat> Here again the parking side and the landscaping side by side and the entrance. So we have to find out uh, whether or not uh, we can uh, put a liquid charging station or not uh, for the hybrid car. We also need to do a survey to find out how many people will use their car. We also have to find out is there any way we can reduce travel time by car that can reduce some emission. This is the project roof uh, which has a skylight uh, which is very good uh, so they can use the skylight uh, to work. Uh, uh, in daytime they might not need that much light as you see all the lights is off and they are working so it's very good to have a skylight. We also need to check the ventilation system uh, if we can incorporate some of on the roof, uh, there is some more ventilation we can put on the roof uh, that can uh, make this uh, space a little more cooler, uh, that's the possibilities. What we do, we do in our assessment, we try to check the lux level, uh, whether or not this lux level is adequate for the particular purpose, uh, for that particular space, right? All the spaces does not require similar lux level. So first we determine all the last level for different different spaces or area and then we can see uh, how is our lighting system working towards to large level whether it's oversized or undersized. Uh, we don't like oversized because it costs too much energy. Uh, we don't like it undersized because it is hamper our uh, production capability and productivity. So we have to do something like that to figure out how we can have the best last level possible. Outside, they also have a very good waste management system. They keep everything very nicely and organized, so the value of the waste does not go wrong. We need care for the waste also. First, we try to reduce it, then we try to reuse it, or if it's not, we recycle it. So, waste, there's a point on waste is a mandatory for waste management system. This project already employs a very good waste management system, so they can they are comply with that was management policy that we are going to incorporate. The next segment that we check is very important indeed. It's called indoor air quality. In this segment, we try to see, uh, examine the project spaces, whether or not it has a fresh air, the ventilation is proper, the sound level is uh, uh, within the limit, and inside BOC level, and all that comes into this indoor air quality segment. Here you can see they have a very good louver uh, to get the air in and opposite side there is a window opening so air can flow very easily. They also have an open out window uh, in both sides of their project or the, of their building so the air flow can uh, happen so the air doesn't get stagnant and is feel better with the good air flow. At the same time, we check their indoor air quality with our uh, air quality index meter and we find out uh, there is no VOC level and it's very good, the indoor air quality. So they will be qualified for this uh, prerequisite uh, very easily uh, without any kind of new investment. They also have fresh drinking water for their employee, which is very important for employee health and they have uh, fresh uh, water, filter water uh, at the side so employee can drink as they need them. So this is just a preview of uh, what we check. We check many other things. Of course, we cannot show you the inside production line, what we check and how we checked it. But uh, we'd like to thank uh, Dalinar and uh, Mariko Gulf uh, for the opportunity, for the warm hospitality. And they make very good product for ventilation, which is the lead requirement. Uh, they also make uh, 
a very good product for the kitchen exhaust system, uh, rooftop ventilation and all that. So we like to thank them uh, to help us to get more healthier inside into the for our project. And I really like to thank them for the opportunity they provided us to see their project or feature their project in our business assessment program. Thank you very much.